Welcome to today's guided practice session. Today we are practicing something that is not for the faint of heart. We are going on an adventure. We are going to discover, break down, and work on uh, what is commonly known as Coltrane changes. This is a practice session today that we are calling John Coltrane's Major Third Test of Strength. Uh, so this is actually a reference to the video game the Legend of Zelda, Zelda Breath of the Wild. For those of you who don't know, it's been a it's been a quarantine project of myself and my children to play this game. So uh, for those who know the game, you might find that kind of a funny title. But this is going to be a major test of strength. This is something that is, if you're not familiar with them, they can be challenging and in a good way. So one thing I want to say about quote-unquote Coltrane changes is that uh, they are only unfamiliar. They're actually not that difficult. Once you spend a little time with them, they're pretty, uh, pretty not simple, but they're, they're, they're just like anything else. It just takes a little bit of familiarity to get used to them, and then they're fine. So I remember uh, an older musician when I was a very young musician told me, you've got to deal with Coltrane changes at some point. Just do it. Get it over with. Get familiar with it, and then you'll, you'll be happy that you did later on. So that's what we're going to do today. So what are we going to do? What's the order of things today? Before we get into that, I just want to say that every guided practice session we do over here is, of course, brought to you by OpenStudioJazz.com. And we like to give you a little deal here over on YouTube today only. If you've never taken an Open Studio course, you can save $50 off our pentatonics and playing out. That's a course that I teach over there. It's all about things that we'll be talking about here, pentatonic scales, and how to take them through in these little modules and uh, apply them to your changes. So you can save $50 on Pentatonix playing out today. There's a link in the chat. There's a link in the description. Enough of that. We'll move on here to what we're tasked to do. And that is to get to work. So first, we're going to answer the question, what are Coltrane changes? I'll kind of break down what they are. We can listen to a few examples I have queued up and really kind of hear it in action from the man himself. And then we're going to do some work on this. We're going to find the juicy notes of the changes. It's kind of like step one of figuring out what to do is like finding the chord tones and then uh, superimposing them. We're also going to practice these in all keys. It's actually super easy to do on Coltrane changes because of the nature of how they're structured. And then we're going to learn a little bit of John Coltrane's own language over these changes. We're going to learn the first phrase of Countdown and uh, just practice that a little bit. We're not going to do too much on that because... We're going to be just kind of getting familiar. If you already can play Coltrane Changes, this might not, might not be the session for you. We're going to be starting slow, slow, slow here and really working on them, uh, trying to get them more and more comfortable. Now, if you can kind of do it, but maybe not in all keys, this is definitely the session for you. And if you've never heard of them before, welcome. Uh, enjoy the ride because you are in in uh, in luck. Today is going to be an amazing day for you as you are introduced to, I think, some of the most challenging and fun chord changes to play on in the history of the music. Okay, so let's get to it. What are Coltrane changes? Well, most famously, they're a part of his album and the title track from the album, Giant Steps. You probably heard of it. It's kind of notorious for being a hard tune to play over, right? So here is the first eight bars of Giant Steps. And this really is a great way to introduce yourself to Coltrane Changes or just to see what they are. I've got my nice little uh, rainbow color code here. So Coltrane Changes are a way that John Coltrane was... It's, it's really, really interesting story here because not only... Did he not invent these changes? They were already a thing when you know before he was even born. Um, but other players were playing them. And then he did, actually didn't even stay with these changes for very long, relatively, in his career. He moved on after just a few albums of including this into a sound to a much broader, you know, that My Favorite Things Love Supreme Crescent kind of sound. So this wasn't even a major, I don't even think this was his, his art artistic peak were these changes. But for some reason, these get a lot of traction amongst musicians. And we'll talk about that. One of the main reasons they get traction is because they move through some really odd ways. So if, as you can see here with Giant Steps, right? We just play through this a little bit. You can see that in a, in a very quick span of time here, Coltrane goes through the key of B, the key of D, and I have these color coded here. Sorry, the key of B, the key of G, I bet, the key of E flat. 
and then he'll, he'll kind of do it again through the key of G, through the key of E flat, and then through the key back to the key of B. So here in just eight bars, he hits three keys that are in no. It's not like he's going to the four or he's going to the five or he's even going up to the to the two above where he starts. He's going like a major third away every time. I mean, he is going a major third away. So here he goes. He starts in B and then he goes to the key a major third down from B, G major. So that D7 note, that's actually a part of the key of G major. That's the five of G major. And then he goes to the key a major third down from G major, which is E flat major. That B flat 13 there is the five of E flat major. So here in this first four bars, you see he goes one, and then he does a five one to a key a, ma a major third down. And then he does a five one to a, a key a major third down from that. So he's kind of coming between these three keys pretty seamlessly. And then he does a little two five back to G, and then he does the same thing. He does a five one to the major key, to the key a major third down E flat. And then he does another five one to the major key, a major third down from that, B major. So he's hitting three keys. And if you look here on the piano, you can see that uh, once we have B, then G, then E flat, if you go a major third down again, it's B again. So he can hit these three keys and then cycle back through. That's what Coltrane changes all about are all about. Giant Steps is kind of the most like, I think it's the easiest to see because it's all very present. The second half of Giant Steps goes through two fives in two five ones in these three keys. Now, again, this was apparently, uh, as people are noting here in the chat, this was like it's an exercise that he was coming up with so that he could play better over these changes because they're hard to play over. And he ended up uh, kind of shaping how a lot of musicians work through these changes and had you know his own artistic stamp on this for a few years. And we'll talk about why I think that was in a little bit. But before we do that, let's have a listen and check out Giant Steps. We can check out the notation here. And let's just listen to the head. Cut you off again. I cut you off again. Let's listen to that one more time. And again, follow along there with that color coding of where it changes keys. Isn't that a beautiful sound, by the way? So so follow along. See if you can follow where those big major third key centers change. Let's listen to it again. Okay, stop. So check it out. The second half of the of the head here, again, he goes to E flat major and then a 2 5 to G major. Right now he's going up in major thirds, then a 2 5 to B flat major or to B major, up again, and then up one more back to E flat major, and then a 2 5 because he's turning back around to the top. Brilliant. And and it's not a very complicated structure, actually. In fact, it's it seems kind of like an etude, as does countdown, which we'll listen to here in a minute. But so I just want to talk about why has this resonated for so long? Why is this a thing? He didn't, you know, Coltrane didn't invent this. He wasn't the first player to play over these changes. Uh, he, they were kind of treated as a almost like an etude for him, and it, it, it kind of seeped its way into his artistic life. But it seems that at, at about two or three years, maybe even less, he kind of saw the limitations of this for his artistic career and moved on to something broader and deeper and I think a lot heavier and more spiritual uh, than just sort of this you know, harmonic exercise. So why has this resonated so heavy with a lot of people, including myself? Well, it's because what we're not talking about here is how absolutely thrashing he was over these changes. I mean, he was destroying these changes when no one else could you know, ever really play 
comfortably over them because they were in a couple standards, you know, the bridge to have you met Miss Jones and all that stuff, but no one's playing them like this. So let's check it out. This is countdown. I have the changes queued up here uh, that are go that'll scroll along. Follow along and see if you can follow, like literally see if you can understand what's happening because it is superhuman brain power that Coltrane is showing throughout this. I mean, just ripping them. Check it out. <laughs> Bow, sir. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is just incredible. I mean, if that's someone's etude, I mean, give me a break. That, that really is just a spectacular example of why this has resonated with so many musicians because he's just demolishing something that's very difficult and pretty much unheard of at the time he was doing it. And again, he kind of abandoned this, you know, not too long after this record. And went on to something else. It was kind of like, well, I've done this now and I can do this now and it's time to go even deeper. But watching him push the envelope here, listening to how he was really pushing his own boundaries as well as the boundaries of what jazz was doing around him. That's the exciting thing, I think, for a lot of musicians. That's the exciting part for all of us, me included. And that's why we come back to these changes and why they're included in so many uh, jam sessions, songs. It's part of the learning process. You know, like that, that old musician told me when I was a kid, you're going to have to deal with them at some point. So, so you might as well rip the Band-Aid off now. So let's talk about that. Before we do, if this is the kind of content that you want to see here at Open Studio, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know. We do respond to what you uh, watch and like and subscribe to. So let me know if this is it. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep making it. So let's talk about how we deal with these changes. We, we saw giant steps there, right? We saw giant steps, which is cool. Giant steps is awesome. But you might have noticed there in Countdown, he's couched these Coltrane, Coltrane, Coltrane has couched the Coltrane changes. He couched, he's couched these major third uh, tonal centers moving around inside of uh, the tune, Tune Up. So you can kind of see that if we, let me see if I can find here. So if we look at, like, how does, how does he take this major third harmony through a minor third, or sorry, through a, a, a two, five, one. So right here, so he starts on E minor, right? So this is a two, five, one in D major. So Countdown is based off the tune, Tune Up, right? So it's a two, five, one to D major over four bars, then a two, five, one to C major over four bars, then a two, five, one, B flat major over four bars. Then there's a one more four bar section of just E minor, F7, B flat major seven, E flat dominant seven. 
How does he play these Coltrane changes over a 2-5-1 just like this? You can see here. So he starts with the 2, right? There's still the 2-5-1 in here. Check out uh, the first chord, E minor 7. That's a 2 of D major. The second to last chord is the 5, A7. And then there's the 1. So there's the 2-5-1. In between the 2 and the 5, he does this major third harmony shift. This is a very easy way we can, we can automatically incorporate these Coltrane changes into our own playing. Whenever we see a 2-5-1, we have an opportunity, if it's stretched out over this amount of time, we have an opportunity to put in this major third harmonic shift in there. So check it out. So he goes E minor, then he takes that up a half step to F dominant 7, which is the 5 of B flat major. So he's gone from the key of D major to B flat major, because E minor is the 2 of D major. It's in the key of D major. So E minor, 5, 1 to B flat, then 5, 1 to G7. Now check it out. 5, 1, major third away is D. So he starts in D and then goes to 5, 1 to B flat, 5, 1 to G flat. That's how he's doing this major, this major third harmonic shift within a 2-5-1. And that's the, how we're going to practice this. Because even if we're playing a, a tune that's not Countdown or Giant Steps, we can actually incorporate this into any 2-5-1 we want. We just... Bam. 2-5-1, Coltrane changes. You've done something super interesting. And by the way, you don't have to, to, to make sure the bass player and even the piano player know what you're doing. A good bass player and piano player will hear what you're doing and go with you if they know this concept. But even if they don't, you can kind of superimpose these over that 2-5-1. They sound good. How do we deal with these changes over a 2-5-1? So we're going to, first of all, we need to start very, very, very slowly. There's no shame in the game of slow practice. All of the great players start and especially uh, build on concepts in a very slow way. It's how, we, it's how we learn. We have to be nice and methodical and not try to go too fast. John Coltrane probably didn't start off playing Countdown at the speed we just heard him do it, right? He probably started very, very slowly going through these changes. So that's what we'll focus on, very, very slow practice. And then I want to focus on these juicy notes, right? So we have chord tones, and this is the one, three, and five and seven, one, three, five, seven of each of these chords. This is great because first of all, they're strong notes, right? They're strong note choices, but also it helps us to kind of outline the chord in our head as we're going through it. So we are not gonna play this, by the way. What I have here, this is not how I wanna practice this like at all. I don't wanna do some kind of formulaic. We could. But no, that's, that doesn't sound good. That's not even a fun way to practice. That's lame. But we can use these chord tones. I just want you to think about what the chord tones are for each one of these chords, right? So here on E minor 7, we have the 1, the 3, the 5, 7, right? E, it's an E minor 7, it's a Dorian sound. Remember, key of D. That's all you really have to remember. Key of D, key of B flat, key of G flat, key of D. Those five ones are not necessarily something we have to even separate out. It's just the different key centers. So one, three, five, seven, F seven, one, three, five, seven. Again, now key of B flat, right? The five of B flat, B flat major, one, three, five, seven. And again, this is just the, the most basic way to really get some juicy notes going. Key of G flat, one, three, five, seven, five, one, B, one, three, five, seven. Okay, that's how I want to think about our note options for this amazing set of chord changes. So when we practice, which we'll do, We'll start right now practicing. Uh, we'll start here in the key of D. And what I want to do is, again, start very slowly. Here are the changes. And I want you to play half notes. <laughs> That's right. Two beats per note. So we're just going to start. Again, stay with me here. Even if you're kind of an intermediate or advanced player, stay with me. And realize that even if we keep it this simple, over a difficult concept like that, we're really, what we're doing is mapping out in our brains what are our note options. So, we'll go even slow. I'm, I'm not afraid to go even slower. So we'll go down to like 66 beats per minute, I think is a great. So let's do half notes. I want you to do one note at a time, right? And the only rule, we're doing some restrictive practice. We're going to start opening it up, but this, is, this will be the most restrictive we'll do. The only rule we'll have is that each of these notes has to be the one, the three, 
the five or the seven of the corresponding chord. So if I were to do something like this, and the 7 of D major 7. So those, those chord tones, right, and putting them through very slowly is how we're going to start. And even if you think this is too easy, this is not too easy. This is actually pretty difficult. So let's see if we can do this. I'll play some chords. You play just half notes and see if you can make these chord tones happen on each of the chords. Ready? One, two, three. Just getting to understand the changes. Let's try it again. Two, three, and. Again, two, three, and. Just half notes. Don't get ahead of it. Stick with it. Go to different parts of the instrument. One more time. Two, three, and. This is how we build this slowly. This is how great players build this slowly. Okay, let's do the same exercise, but now I'm going to let you off the leash just a little bit. Let's do quarter notes. So something like, but it has to be the one, three, five, seven of any of these chords. It's actually pretty good. Let's try it. So quarter notes, but whatever note you play has to be the one, the three, the five, or the seven of whatever chord we're on. Let's try it. One, two, three, and. Just quarter notes. Try it again. Two. Two, three, and. All right, you ready to try some eighth notes? So again, here with eighth notes. That's where it gets challenging. to be the one, the three, or the five, or the seven. It can only be those notes. We'll open it up a little bit more after that, but let's see if you can do it. This is this is pretty intense. Let's try it. One, two, three. again let's now open it up to 16th notes and let's now open it up to any note of the scale so here with our e minor is a dorian scale right an e because we're in the key of d f7 we start with the mix it's the b flat major scale right when we change to the key of b flat here even though it's the five you can think b flat major uh b flat major obviously for b flat major seven we switch to the key of g, of g flat so that's the g flat major or the b flat mixolydian and now we're going to be doing 16th notes. So. Ba 
What I want you to do though is even though we're using 16th notes and we can now use scale tones or scale running here, you want to see if you can land on one of these chord tones, the one, the three, the five, or the seven on the beat, on the new chord. It's a challenge. So you might go. And you can phrase it however you want, but see if you can land on the one, the three, the five, or the seven of each one of these chords, or maybe start on the one, three, five, seven of any of these chords using our 16th notes. It doesn't have to be continuous 16th notes. You can phrase it however you want, but let's see if we can keep these strong, these juicy notes here at the heart of it. Not as easy as it sounds. Let's try it. One, two, three, and. Nice. Try it again. Three, four. Nice. Try it again one more time. So from here is where we would work it up just a little bit. Try it here. One, two, three, and. Again, three, four. Then anytime this gets too difficult, go back to eighth notes or quarter notes or half notes. Don't be too proud for that. Three, again. One more tempo here. One, one, two, three, and. It's a real tempo. Again. It's not fast, but it's real. Okay, well, just for me, let's do a little medium, medium right here. All right, so we'll go to eighth notes here. This is really more in line with what you would do. Uh, two, three. This isn't still, this is not very fast, but here eighth notes become sort of our primary target for the duration. So see if you can make that happen. And again, see if you can start or have the target of when the chord changes, you're on the one, the three, the five, or the seven. That's how we really outline these changes in a way that really hits home. Try it. One, two, one, two, three, and. Two, three, and. Just keep looping it. 
more time. Come on, how much fun is that? So much fun. So, so, so much fun. Okay, we have a few more keys to go through here. We're going to hit all 12 keys. Here's the thing, because these move through in major thirds, they hit three keys here in one. So right there, you know, with that first one, we hit the key of D, the key of B flat, and the key of G flat. With this one, in D flat major, we hit the key of D flat, we hit the key of A, and we hit the key of F, right? All down in major thirds. Let's try it. Let's go slow. And again, we're going to build this up. So start with half notes. Half notes, and again, I want you to think about what are the one, three, five, seven of each one of these chords. Right, for E flat minor, it's that. For E7, it's this. For E flat major, it's that. For C7, it's that. And I want you to play half notes, so one note per change, per chord change, and only play the one, three, or five, or seven of each one of these chords. It's like the perfect way to map out what we want to do here in our heads. Let's try it. One, two, three. So just half notes playing the one, the three, the five, or the seven of each one of these chords. Two, three, it's one note per chord. See if you can make little melodies out of this. It's challenging. Try it again. Two, three, ten. just spelling out what are our options here. Oh, man, it's so nice. Okay, we'll, we'll let off the, the leash just a little bit more. Quarter notes here. So see if you can keep that same rule, though, of one, three, five, seven. So it could be like... There's some good options here. You don't have to do two in a row. See what you can make of this. Actually, skipping around is great. You get some really cool colors when you do that. Try it. Quarter notes. Two, three, and. on to eighth notes and now I'll unleash the entire scale of what we want to do here and again it's helpful to think of these in those regions of the key so our E flat minor seven you know you might think of it as Dorian but you could think of it as just D flat major territory and then when you get to the E7 you could think about it as A major territory as is the A major the C7 and F major seven are both just F major territory you know that's the five one of F major. When things start to move by really fast, I find this very helpful. Of course, you're going to want to stick with some of the strong tones. The one, three, five, seven are a great option, but we can think about just changing that color palette here within the chord changes. Let's try it here. Eighth notes. Now, again, you can use scale tones. Any scale tone is available, but see if you can land on when the chord changes or start on the one, three, five, seven. So... Some real options here for some good sounding playing even at this tempo eighth notes strong chord tones you got it two three and Thank you. 
more time here at this tempo. Two, three, two. Uh. Three. Stop. Let's take it up just a little bit. 100 and eight beats per minute. Stick with eighth notes and stick with this idea of really starting on or landing on, however you want to think about this, the one, the three, the five, the seven. Let's go. One, two, three, and you got it. Here we go. Real tempo, nice medium, 140. One, two, one, two, three, and. Halfway through, we're halfway through all twelve keys. It's the brilliance of playing these in these major third uh, increments here. The Coltrane changes. Let's go back down to 80, 81 beats. I like to pick weird numbers on my metronome. Let's do the same exercise here. So now we have it in the key of C, right? This is just a two five one in the key of C, but we put these major third shifts here in the middle of the two five. So check out the first chord and the last two chords. That's the two. Right, G, uh, sorry, D minor seven is the two in the key of C. That's second to last chord, G seven, that's the five. And then the last chord is the one, right, in C. Now between this, he goes to the key of A flat, the key of E, and then back to C. Again, from C, A flat is a major third below, and E is a major third below that, so we cycle through these. Let's start here, 81 beats per minute. Again, start half notes, and your only rule is you can only play on the one, three, five, or seven of each one of these chords. So it could sound like this. And try jumping around this time. See if you can find some leading tones. Just experiment, have fun. Try it. One, two, three, and. Good work you're doing. Three and last time. Okay, let's take the leash off a little bit. Quarter notes here. Again, they, they can only you can only use the one, three, five, or seven. You can get some good stuff. Two, Again. 
Just quarter notes, 1357. All right, how about eighth notes? Now we can open up to the entire scale that we're using. So Dorian on the D, Mixolydian on the E flat. You know, we're just shifting our key centers here. So you go from the key of C to the key of E flat, A flat, to the key of E, back to the key of C. But again, we want to really emphasize our one, three, five, seven. Let's try it. Two, three, and. Start on the one, the three, the five, or the seven of each one of those notes. Thirteen beats per minute. One, two, three, and. and eighth notes. You don't have to play continuous eighth notes. See if you can start on the one, three, five, or seven. You got. tempo 143 here we go you got it and if this is too much for you go back to quarter notes go back to half notes no shame in that one two three and key and that's all the keys isn't that awesome that's what's so fun about playing uh, these changes is you can hit so much let's start here half notes we're going to start a little bit faster so key of b major it's a two five one to b check it out it goes to g this is like giant steps then to e, e flat and then ends on b if your brain is burning it should be that means you're growing learning here let's try it so half notes only again Think of the one, three, five, or seven of each one of these chords. See if you can do. Start slow. The slower you start, the more you'll be able to retain this. This is good work here. Play with me. Three. Try quarter notes again with that rule one, three, five, seven only for quarter notes. Try it one, two, three, and beautiful. You can see why he picked B for giant steps, it's absolutely gorgeous. Three.
quarter notes only and chord tones only. One, three, five, seven. Let's do it two more times. Two, three, and. Let's take it up eighth notes. See if you can start on a chord tone. Try it with me. One, two, three, and. chromatic scales to get to the chord tones, that's totally cool, actually. As long as you're kind of recognizing what the chord tones are, that's the important part. Do it again. Two, three, again. One more tempo after this. All right. Big kid tempo here, 154. You ready? Again, if this is too much, hit quarter notes, hit half notes. No shame in that. One, two, one, two, three, and. That's all 12 keys. We just did all 12 keys, Coltrane changes. Again, we're talking about today one of the great efforts of the 20th uh, century. We just did what are Coltrane changes. We listened. We found the juicy notes. We practiced in all 12 keys. There's one more thing we're going to do. We're going to learn a bit of language, so don't go anywhere. And again, uh, you can go to openstudiojazz.com for a deeper dive on all of this. Again, we are giving you a $50 off pentatonics of playing out today. Got to take care of that, pay the bills. But other than that, today is all about John Coltrane's major third test of strength, which how big of the test of strength is that? That felt great, right? But here's the key with this, right? If we can keep it slow, like we did, think about half notes, think about quarter notes, think about hitting those chord tones, keeping it simple, restrictive practice, like handcuffing yourself a little bit to the piano in a way that makes you simplify what you're doing so it's not just so overwhelming you've got all these chord changes or whatever then we can kind of make it easy on ourselves so there's one more thing i want to do if this is the kind of thing you want to see here from open studio go ahead and hit the like button or if this is like your fourth or fifth video you watched hit the subscribe button we're live all the time doing these things so before we get to here let's check this out so we listened to Countdown and we saw the changes go by and I just had the changes, but I thought to get a flavor from the man himself, what if we took the first phrase he plays in Countdown and we just practiced it a little bit. So here it is, listen. It 
Get it? Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's listen to it again. It's really fast. So I just wanted to play just this and work on this very slowly just so we can hear and kind of break down what Coltrane was doing himself. So here he starts on E, F sharp, G, and A. E, F sharp, G, and A is what that should say. <laughs> e, F sharp, G, and A. And then we have this little, check this out, this little half step thing on F7, F, E, E flat, F, and then on B flat major, just down here, the B flat major pentatonic scale, then on D flat seven, right? The nine, the seven, the five, the root, all strong chord tones, right? Then on G major seven, he's got this, the third, the root, and then he has this little, this could be anything actually really hard to hear and then again this very similar to this up here on the F7 but on the A7 and then down the D major 7 isn't that great so here awesome let's do this very very slowly and again the first four notes are E F sharp Nice and slow. Even slower. Here's the thing. We don't have to start fast. Let's try it here. One, two, three, and. Get a feel for these. This is what Coltrane played himself. I mean, three times as fast as this. Try it again. Two, three, again. that. Try it again. Two, three, and. Mm. Two, three, and. Two, piece of language from this master. A little bit faster. One, two, three, and. Two, three, again. How awesome is that? All right, one more tempo, and that's it for today. One, two, three. great John Coltrane. Um, just a pleasure to practice these uh, major third test of strength chords with you and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, hope this was your thing. I love these kind of nerdy things with the harmony. So we'll do more of these. Uh, thanks for your work today. Until next time. Happy practicing y'all.
See ya. Later, folks.